Hey gang, welcome back. So I have been playing the Ancient Wars series and I have been doing some reading and coming to grips with this game. And I'm, uh, I'm gonna just say flat out, I really like what it's trying to do. However, I'm not sure that this specific scenario is starting from any point that makes a lot of sense unless I'm mixing up how we go about things. So, when in doubt, grab a history book, right? So, the first thing I did was grab uh, Grant's, uh, Michael Grant's, uh, what is this called? The Armies of, the Army of the Caesars. And just had a look at some of the regions. And so here's some things that I didn't know, uh, starting over the left-hand side over here. Uh, yeah, there's the lower and upper uh, Rhine regions, and then an area called Agria, which kind of encapsulates this little section here. Then there's uh, Noricum here. Then upper Pannonia is going to be right around this area here, which is where we're having the action, which is good, which you'll see in a second, and then Dacia. So I wasn't familiar with those last three or four um, term up terms for these specific regions. And then the German region or Germany, that's called the Ducamates. Uh, and there's a, looks like there's some sort of exclamation mark of some type or or uh, inflection over the u there so that might be pronounced difference but generally it's the germanic region right all right so so this is all sort of post trajan and as uh as uh the where am i i lost my spot sorry i'm just trying to look up this general's name here that's right so as Marcus and Versus came to power, uh, you know, the Praetorian Guard was given its fabulous 5,000 denarii to share amongst themselves, and all the legionnaires were given more money. Right as that happened, uh, Parthia launched one of its periodical uh, coups into Armenia, which is over on the right hand side. You see where that arrow is, they have already launched their attack as a vassal state of uh, the Parthians. And then, let's see here. Uh, so we had this general called, uh, the Syrian general called Avidius Cassus. And I think I wrote about him. And this is all, you're seeing all this probably now. It'll be probably a month after this is all packed up and done. But uh, I'm just trying to get a little historical context here and we'll see what happens. So we had this uh, Parthian crisis evolving and uh, Versus has sent his general off to take care of business and the Armenians are attacking and that all looks okay. Very underwhelming amount of Parthian forces, I must say. Excuse me. But then in uh, Pannonia, in this area here, we have this uh, critical emergency that develops on the Pannonian frontier. The Makamanai of uh, Bohemia, a large and relatively advanced German people, were pushed southwards by convulsive population movements extending far back into Northern Europe. In about AD 166, after a long period of restlessness that took advantage of Rome's preoccupations in the east, to surge across the Danube. While to the east, in the Danube Tisa uh, reentrant, the Sarmatian, how would you say that correctly? Yes, yeah, Sarmatian Jazergis, uh, it's a J A Z Y G E S, likewise burst into Pannonia. Okay. Is that right? It says this pan, this, these guys came into Pannonia. All right. So they both even, well, I guess one came into upper and perhaps the lower Pannonia. Uh, Makomanai are right around this area, I think, yeah, here. 
Okay, so this was a collusive threat uh, of unprecedented severity, but the Roman army, strung out, uh, out behind its fortifications without a central reserve, was ill-equipped to meet the storm. And at the, as the war uh, began to gather strength, Versus died in 169. All right, blah, 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 blah. Someone married someone, yada, yada, yada. Uh, with difficulty, two new regions were recruited to meet the Pannonian crisis. Uh, the details are fairly obscure, but uh, but these include two disasters uh, which took place in 170. So this would be four years on from where we are because we're starting at 166, I believe. Yes, that's right. Excuse me. So pouring across the upper and middle Danube at many points, the German tribes penetrated deep into the empire and even crossed the Alps into Italy. Right here, right? Uh, into the town of uh, modern-day Odorozzo, Odorzo, Odorzo, sorry, and Aquilio uh, had a narrow escape. And then, while this emergency was still causing the gravest of disquiet, an invasion of the tribe uh, uh, of a tribe of uncertain origin, the Costaboca, the Costabochi, uh, crossed the lower Danube area uh, and overran the Balkans, which would be down in this area around right here, uh, to within only a few miles of Athens. Athens is all the way down here somewhere. I think this is one of these is Athens. I don't know where Athens is. I'm such a there's Thessalonica. Here's Athens all the way down here on the coast. Seriously? All that way? Come on. Okay. Bear with me here. Work with me. Just hang in there. Okay? Uh, so, uh, where were we? During this long series of painful campaigns necessitated by these disasters, more than one Praetorian prefect lost his life and the empire was reduced to almost desperate financial straits. The emperor had two main ideas for dealing with the situation. One was to admit Germans into the empire as settlers. Uh, Augustus and Nero had done the same, and later it, ha it was to become common practice. Aurelius' other proposed solution was to push forward and shorten the imperial frontier, creating two new provinces of the, of the Makamani and uh, Samatia, 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 S-A-R-M-A-T-I-A. Depends where you're from and how you want to pronounce that. That's fine. Augustus had tried to do this and had failed. And Aurelius failed too. For just as it began to seem possible that his plans would bear fruit, Navidius Cassus, this is the dude from Syria, he decides that it's time for him to become emperor because he heard some news that Marcus Aurelius was dying or had died. And so he declared himself emperor at the behest of possibly uh, Marcus's wife. Long story short, the uh, rebellion didn't last very long by the time Marcus left uh, this region, got his ass all the way over to here. Uh, the legion said, are you out of your mind? We are not going to rebel. And they killed the dude. Right. So why am I telling you all that? I'm telling you all of that because we start this, this scenario with, I believe, four or five let's call them war bands. And when we rolled up all of the German tribes that were going to revolt, at first I was like, wow, that's a bunch. Excuse me, there's eight. That's crazy. And so you do a, you know, whether you do a random draw or you draw them deliberately, you either pull uh, crappy big units or you pull smaller, better units. Yeah, you know, half of one, uh, Half a dozen of one, six of the other. So there are, I don't see, now I can also see, so before I go any further, we've only played a turn or two, excuse me. So I can imagine over time, let's just see, how many, how many chits do we get? Where are my chits? This fine. So maybe we could recruit, uh, but there's a counter mix limit. Well, so we can recruit, two to five counters a turn, build up an army and see what happens. I don't know how long it took the accumulation of this force to happen and for those forces then to move their way down to you know, where the trouble is. So I'm wondering if in the opening turns, it wouldn't be, make more sense for the German uh, 
the Germanic tribes that do revolt. I've got the there's the stack of four over there, four blocks you can see. They're the 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 Quadi and the Makamani and some other guys all revolted in all around this area. I'm wondering if it does make more sense to recruit and put them further deeper into the German territories and wait, build up a massive force and then come down while we take the the German the Romans yeah, they know this is going to happen. They've just been afflicted by the plague. They've lost nine legions or equivalent thereof. And so now maybe they, they don't have to be so aggressive in their advances, although they, this has worked out really well. I mean, this, I wonder if this isn't... No, it's not an automatic victory, but if I could colonize these two things, then that locks up the victory conditions there. But I think we would then see you know, a pretty massive force coming down. So I'm just wondering if there's not a, a larger or longer period of staging and force accumulation before the, the battle kind of is ensued here. And I'm wondering if I, perhaps we're rushing into the main event a little quickly in April 166 versus sort of waiting a little while and uh, uh, trying to reflect a little bit more of the history that, that occurred here. So what does that mean? I think what that means is I'm going to take this force here and we'll keep whatever losses we uh, incurred and accrued for both sides. I'm going to move them back up to here somewhere. I'm going to eat the loss here, let it be, assuming that the Romans have you know, reacted uh, viciously. I was trying to say uh, viriciously. Wow. That's very impressive. I cannot say that word. I cannot think of the correct pronunciation. Well, fuck it. Okay, so, uh, and then down here, we'll do the same thing. We're going to grab these guys and push them back and let the recruitment occur in the hinterlands of the German tribes. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. And we're going we're gonna to let that all accrue and build up this force. Now, in this game, we need to have... Uh, tribes kind of operating independently and then we need to have as few stacks as possible uh, which is going to kind of you know play the hand out of the of the given side that's got the stacks right because wherever the stacks are is where the action is going to be so we'll have to think about that because spreading units out will mean lots of die rolling and lots of interruptions and dispersals and all that sort of fun stuff. So anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. That's, that's 12, 13 minutes too long. So that's kind of what's going on. I think we're going to sort of pseudo reset and take our time and, and let the German massive invasion into the Pannonian, uh, Pannonian uh, plains here and this area here around the Danube, this heavily forested section here. Let that evolve and build up rather than trying to force something to happen very quickly. I think we'll do the same sort of thing with the Parthian uh, Empire on the right-hand side over here as well. All right, thanks for listening in. I'm happy to read some more historical stuff out to you if you're interested in it. In it, I have a bunch of other texts that we could reference. Talk to you soon.